Well, here are the uh, SE three parts after they've been through the grip blaster. <clears throat> the um, base required a little bit more of a going over afterwards. Uh, I had to use some uh, emery cloth and lac. Some of the rust was quite deeply embedded in the surface. Um, but yeah, it's all pretty much ready for paint now. Um, and uh, that will be the next stage. And I'll talk a little bit more about um, what paint I'll be using in a minute. Okay, let's talk about paint. Um, it's taken me quite a few years to get to where I am with paint and I've tried various different things and uh, some were better than others. But um, basically, for metal parts, um, with the exception of fireboxes, <clears throat> we start off with this. Now, uh, this is Upole Acid 8, which is an etch primer. It's grey, light grey in colour. Um, and you can get that from... Uh, I think Amazon sell it, eBay, uh, in the UK you can get it from car accessory shops like Halfords. It's not cheap, but this seems to be pretty much the best uh, metal primer that I've come across. It it it, uh, it really does adhere well to metal. Uh, it fills well too, so if you've got um, a, a rust pitted surface that's been cleaned up, that, that that's quite good for that. Um, yeah, that goes on uh, after the, obviously after the <coughs> grip blasting, that goes on, that will go on the um, base plate, the engine frames, uh, and the flywheel on the mammoth. And then uh, there'll be one coat of that, leave it a few days to real harden off. And then on the, um, on the, on the mammoth, on the base plate and the flywheel, we'll use plastic oak, um, supercross uh, enamel, um, this is really good, very hard wearing, gives a very nice finish. Um, and again, you can get this anywhere, um, eBay, I think Amazon sell it too. Um, and I've been using this now for a number of years and I've found it to be very good. Uh, again, this is purely for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, the mammoth, the engine frames, uh, plastic coat do this, uh, green apple B50, which is allegedly supposed to be, um, the same as the original mammoth, um, apple green it's i don't think it is exactly the same but it's pretty close it is very difficult to tell the difference right the firebox we treat very differently i've tried various different things over the years um barbecue paint um, but in the end i've ended up using this now this is uk car accessory shop halfords uh, high temperature engine enamel paint um i've got both satin black which is what this is which i'm using on the mammoth firebox and i've also got matte black and um, this stuff is is um, is very good. It's a very thick paint. Um, however, it will level off. Obviously, you apply it with a brush. Um, and basically, the way I do it on a firebox such as the Mammoth is I will paint one uh, surface and leave that horizontal. Wait for it to dry and then paint um, the opposite horizontal surface. Let that dry and so forth. Um, I generally do a couple of coats is 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 normally a couple of coats is normally uh, good enough for it but then this is the trick <laughs> trick bit once it's actually dried as in touch dry uh, put it on a nice baking tray and stick it in the oven at gas mark five for about an hour and that really really bakes it on um, and uh, I've had um, I, I don't think I've had any of the fire boxes that I've painted with that um, have the paint come off uh, even you know during use with, with the burner in there so um so yeah that's it basically for the paint um there's not really uh, uh much else to say except to uh, actually get on and do the painting well we've had some rather nice weather over the last few days so i've managed to get the uh, etch primer on all the metal parts for the uh, mammoth se3 so while that's hardening off before the next stage of painting i thought we'd turn our attention to the burner now, I've got a bit of uh, square section, one inch brass tube here, which has been cut to length. And the idea is that uh, I marked it out on the top there. Um, I'm going to uh, drill a couple of large holes and then mill out the, the, the rest of it to provide the opening for 
uh, you know, where obviously the flame wood will, will come. Uh, I've also got a couple of very, very old, completely knackered um, mammoth uh, meths burners here, and I'm just going to, they were all rusted, the tops were completely rusted, well, I'm going to salvage the uh, the fiberglass matting stuff that's inside, which will go inside here, and then we'll create a new gauze to on the top, and then just uh, solder on a couple of small plates, one either end, and then make the handle to go in uh, one end, and we should have a perfectly serviceable burner. So, um, right, I'm going to get on and do that now. Right, well, there's the uh, slot all cut nicely in the um, in the brass tube. So basically what we've got to do now is uh, cut a bit of mesh for it, put this in, uh, make up end plates and, uh, and the handle. Um, okay, so how did I do this? Well, um, uh, I don't have a milling machine. So, uh, Mr. Pete, if you're watching this and listening to it, please either mute the sound or turn away now, because this is definitely not good engineering practice. <laughs> Basically what I did was, I, after marking it out, um, I drilled some holes at either end of the slot and increased on the drill press and increased the size up to about 8mm. Um, and then I, um, I had to improvise a bit at that stage. <laughs> so basically what I did was, I um, this is, the people are going to be appalled at this, but I basically used a G-clamp and uh, clamped it to the tool post on the lathe and uh, leveled it up as best as I could. And then I used an 11mm end, end mill in the lathe to um, bore out the holes I drilled and then I basically just used the uh, end mill in the lathe to uh, and uh, using the uh, top slide to cut the hole, cut the slot um, and then that was, there's not, you, you, you had to work from both ends because there's not enough travel, the clamp obviously gets in the way um, so basically once the, the actual main slot was cut and then I transferred it over to the drill press which is, again is not, not good engineering practice um, I've got a uh, cross slide vise on my drill press so um, I put the 11 mil uh, end mill in the drill press and I used it to um, basically take out the sides to the right to the right depth but uh, this is not good practice because obviously a drill press the bearings in a drill press are not designed to uh, take sideways pressure which you get when you use it for milling um, however um, uh, as I said unfortunately I don't have a mill I'd love to have one but I don't have the space um, and so you basically have to improvise so anyway that's that done that's all ready to go now um, and on to the next part Okay, <clears throat> this is where we've got to. Um, the uh, etch primer has been sprayed onto the base and the flywheel and the two engine mounts. And uh, it's actually been, been done for a few days now, but um, typical of the British weather, weather in the summertime, if we've now entered June, it's started to rain. So I haven't been able to do any further painting. Although obviously I can do the engine frames because they're brush painted, I can do those inside. Um, the burner is finished. You can see that there. Um, basically uh, a couple of small bits of thick brass to make the end plates this one was tapped 6BA there's a little lock on there and a little bit of bent up um, brass rod to make the handle uh, and I basically threaded the end of it a um, bit of aluminium gauze in there and the um, packing fiberglass packing from the old mammoth burners is, is in there underneath that gauze and then uh, just a little tiny bit of dowling turned up to make the uh, the uh, wooden handle, wooden part of the handle. So that's done. I've tested the burner; it actually works, amazing. Uh, so, so yeah. So the next stage is wait for the weather to improve so that we can we can get some paint on the um, some top coat on. Um, so um, there'll be a little bit of a pause for now. Well, we're getting near the end of the uh, Mammod SE3 restoration now, and we're just uh, uh, down to the nitty-gritty bits, really. Um, we've had a couple of nice days of weather, so I've managed to get the red top coat, two coats, on the base plate um, uh, and the uh, flywheels. So that's that's all, all sorted. That's just drying. So I thought we'd turn our attention to the rest of it, which is <coughs> basically just clean up now. Uh, the uh, cylinders, pistons and comrades. rods, uh, boiler bands, pipe work, safety valve, pulley. Uh, we still need to make the uh, chimney. Now this is a bit of uh, brass tube which is about the right size. It's very difficult getting thin walled brass tube actually. So 
Uh, this is a bit too long. The Mamma Tuni is 87mm in length, and obviously it needs to be flared at the top and a slot cut at the, at the bottom to take the exhaust uh, steam pipes. Um, but uh, what I'll do with this, I'll stick this in the lathe and use the boring bar to uh, thin down a little bit at the top end and at the bottom end so that it will sit in the right place and I'll be able to flare out the top to make a nice chimney stack. Uh, that's a very, very simple job. And uh, Oh yeah, and then the inside will need to be uh, the top will need to be uh, etch primed and then sprayed with some red uh, and that's really about it but I mean basically the way I will go about cleaning up this this sort of stuff is you just use wire wool I mean it's just as good as anything I mean so you can see the effect of here this is fairly uh, fairly dirty copper pipe and you just rub this up and down it basically transforms it from the horrible dirty pipe that it was to that and and the same it doesn't take an awful lot of effort and the same with uh, uh, with the um, with the cylinders again you know you just go over them with a wire wall I will go over them with metal polish as well um, but the wire wall will clean them up lovely um, and the the round items uh, the safety valve and the, uh, the pulley I will simply put a, a, an arbor through these and put them in the lathe and, and it just it just makes cleaning them up a lot easier um, and then we've got one last job to do which is to reattach this uh, which is the uh, I think that's the uh, left hand engine block that's got to be resoldered onto there and I'll say all this has got to be cleaned up but um, that's pretty much it and then it'll just be assembly Okay, well this is the uh, <coughs> majority of the metal parts that needed cleaning and uh, I spent quite a bit of time yesterday afternoon doing this and all the pipe work's all been cleaned up, pulling and everything, it's all nice and shiny now. Um, and uh, the got the chimney made, so, you know, worked out quite well actually, and that works, that works a treat, so it's all ready to go. So, uh, I want to say a quick word about cleaning um, here. Um, it takes time. That took me best part of two hours just to clean the copper pipe work here, and the the pulley and the pistons and the and the uh, regulator valve. Um, you're not going to do this quickly. And so, if you're the kind of person who wants instant results, then you really shouldn't be doing this because it it does take time. Yeah, and whilst power tools such as Dremels and things like that with wire brushes can help, uh, ultimately you're going to have to use your hands. And rag and cleaning and metal polish and it is not a quick job it takes time um, so and the other thing I will say as well is anyone who knows anything about brass will know this <clears throat> things like the boiler will not stay looking like this okay brass will tarnish just in the air so that will go dull over a period of time and it doesn't take very long either um, so if you want to keep it looking like that you'll have to clean it regularly I mean, once you've once you've got it cleaned up like that, then it, it's 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 you know five minutes with a bit of metal polish and some uh, paper towel, on it, and you'll it'll get it coming back up perfect again. But um, you will have to keep your eye on, on that if you want to keep it keep it clean. Um, so um, right, well, I'll put all this together uh, with all the other bits, and uh, hopefully uh, the next stage will be trying to make it look like a model steam engine. Well, there we go. All the bits to hopefully make up a complete Mammoth SC3. Um, it is still missing one, and the eagle eyed amongst you probably have already spotted that, and that is that I've only got one cylinder retaining screw and spring. Uh, that was because there was only one um, cane with it, um, so I've got to find one of those. But that, I think, has I have eight or six BA, I think, that uh, normally. Um, the, the little springs out of ballpoint pens are actually quite good for, for that. Um, but it's pretty much ready to go back together. So, um, uh, hopefully, uh, we should have a working Mammoth SE3. Uh, and um, that will be the um, the next uh, video in the series and will be the final one. Um, I'll uh, show it on it uh, on, on, the, uh, on the stand so you can see the thing when it's complete and, uh, and then we'll run it, hopefully. 
<laughs> okay, that's it for now.